All right, welcome everyone. Good evening, thanks for coming out in the cold. I'm Anthony Mata, the Assistant Director of the Nanavik Institute for European Studies. Welcome to the, uh, the continuing Nanavik Institute film series, uh, which this semester has the theme of the best of recent European film. Continues the, the, um, the series from last semester. I see that a lot of you have picked up uh, our brochure or our placard about the series this semester. We're excited about what's happening. I wanted to let you know, before I introduce the, uh, the speaker tonight, who has about six or seven minutes uh, worth of introduction about this film, to bring to your attention a news item that I discovered just today. It's dated 27 January 2011, Moscow Times. Russia to keep key Katyn files classified. A Russian human rights group lost a legal battle on Wednesday to declassify documents from a probe into the 1940 Soviet massacre of Polish officers at Katyn. The refusal to reveal why, in 2004, prosecutors dropped an investigation into the killings may further sour relations, etc., etc. The Russian Supreme Court did not disclose the legal grounds for its rejection of the appeals by rights group memorial. So, as when I initially uh, talked to the faculty about which films to show for the series, I think the plane crash over the forest occurred, had occurred. Um, we knew about this film. It had won many awards, we thought. Well, we should program this, but we didn't know that it would continue to make news even today. So to tell you more about this is Miko Ikenitsky, who is Assistant Professor of History here at Notre Dame. Thanks. Thank you, Tommy. Um, good evening. Um, I would like to start, actually, and I hope, you know, even though he said that I'm going to speak for seven, six, seven minutes, I hope that you don't mind ten. Um, and I would like to start actually um, with my recollections um, from, from Warsaw in um, December uh, 2007 when I went to see uh, Katyn. And, and there was one particular thing which really struck me actually as I was sitting in the screening room, which was silence, occasionally broken by sobs. And uh, nothing against you folks, but nobody was eating popcorn. Um, it's not a popcorn movie, in a way. And I think there are three reasons, actually, for this. Um, the first one is its content, um, which really deals, actually, with the gruesome massacre of 15,000 um, Polish officers and policemen uh, by the Soviet security in spring 1940. Uh, this event is still considered, actually, to, to be one of the, of the gravest, you know, calamities um, um, in 20th century Polish history, and it still remains actually one of the dominant narratives of 20th century um, um, history. And what is also interesting about this event is that um, outside of Poland, this crime um, still remains one of lesser known episodes of, of World War II. The second reason why this is not a popcorn movie um, is that uh, here we basically have one of the leading auteurs and uh, giants of world cinema, Andrzej Wajda, at work. And the third reason is basically the movie um, itself, um, which is not another Hollywood flick, but a movie which, instead of entertaining, um, really seeks to educate and involve um, audiences in cinematic dialogue about history, about national character, uh, about memory. And I think that um, sometimes uh, we, we miss basically this sort of approach in, in filmmaking in, in our country. Um, now, the facts of the massacre um, have been well known, but let me repeat uh, some background for uh, this part of tonight's audience, uh, which is not so acquainted um, um, with Polish history. Um, the murder of 15,000 Polish officers um, in the forest on Kat of Katyn in Western Russia and two other locations um, occurred in April and May uh, 1940 after the joint um, uh, Nazi-Soviet invasion of Poland in September uh, 1939. Uh, the reason for this massacre was very straightforward. Um, and that is that these were members of Poland's uh, elite, um, and, uh, active duty soldiers, as well as reservists, so these people were journalists, uh, lawyers, doctors, 
academics or businessmen. Um, these people had to be eliminated in order to uh, Sovietize Poland's eastern uh, territories and simply to break the backbone um, of the nation. Um, the massacre site was discovered and uh, very well publicized by the Nazis in the spring of 1943. Uh, the Soviets uh, blamed the Nazis, the Western Allies uh, resolved to ignore it in order to keep uh, the war against the Nazis going without losing its Soviet, their Soviet ally. Um, for the Soviet-backed Polish communists who took over uh, the country in 1945, uh, the Katyn murder was a taboo. Uh, and it also happened to be, I think, one of the founding lies of the communist regime um, in Poland. Uh, not until the early 1990s um, uh, did the Soviets and then the Russian government admitted um, Stalin's guilt. Uh, and what is also interesting actually about the crime um, in our tonight's context is that one of um, the killed officers was Jakub Wajda, uh, the father of Andrzej Wajda, the director of the movie you are going to see tonight. So for Vida, it was a very, very personal project. He spent approximately 12, 13 years working on the script, gathering basically the crew, and then acquiring eventually what amounts to a super production budget in Poland, approximately six, seven million uh, dollars. Now, a few words about Vida. <clears throat> uh, born in 1926, Andrzej Vida um, has been a filmmaker for nearly um, 60 years. Um, he's a world-renowned uh, director who, together with uh, several other characters, um, created what is known in the world of cinema cast as the Polish school. Um, the, the generation of very gifted filmmakers that really established a Polish cinema and on the cinematic map of the world in the late 1950s and 1960s. Uh, the Polish school really focused actually on Poland's traumatic history and its impact on um, individuals. It also confronted um, uh, the national patriotic canon. It confronted uh, uh, the glorification uh, of romantic heroism and, and martyrdom. Um, Vida's personal qualities um, include his painter's eye. Um, before actually going to study cinema at the famous Łódź Film School, in the early 1950s, he actually studied painting um, at the Academy of Fine Arts in Krakow. And I think you will actually notice this sort of legacy tonight uh, uh, as well. But we also basically have his uh, preoccupation with history and society um, um, in his homeland. And you also will notice actually willingness um, to engage audiences in conversation rather than imposing sort of, you know, one-sided vision. Uh, his films, particularly his early films from the late 1950s and 60s, um, often tend to be ambiguous and ambivalent in the positive meaning of these two, uh, of these two words. Um, he gradually also acquired, you know, a very distinctive um, um, visual style and proved a versatile filmmaker uh, capable of um, making thought-provoking films about World War II, communist takeover, 19th century industrial revolution, uh, or the French Revolution. Um, he also adapted uh, numerous classics uh, of Polish literature and worked in several countries with uh, multinational crews. His Danton, uh, made in France, is actually a very good example of this sort of cosmopolitan part of Vida's uh, filmmaking. Now, few things about the movie I would like to tell you without spoiling the plot, which you know anyway, after I made these historical uh, uh, comments about historical background. <clears throat> I really don't know, and this is only my personal um, uh, uh, impression, if this is the best introduction um, to the cinema of Andrzej Wajda, because this movie is so much more monumental than his other films. And this monumentality, I think, is really connected actually to the content of the movie, the Katy massacre, and then a very personal connection um, um, to Vida's uh, life. Nevertheless, um, this film 
uh, projects actually the director's preoccupations um, as well as his craft. Um, he said on several occasions that um, he addresses this film to young people and I think university is a very appropriate venue for this um, who you know very often uh, uh, don't know national history or drift away from it. Uh, so clearly Vida's movie um, uh, is meant to be an educating and reflecting experience in Polish patriotism. Um, apart from the stunning cinematography, what you will also immediately notice, I think, uh, roughly in 15, 20, maybe 25th minutes, uh, 25th minutes of the movie, is that the narrative of this movie is not linear. Um, on the one hand, the film tells the story of several officers who perished in the Katyn uh, uh, forest, but above all, Vida is actually really interested in telling the stories of their wives, their daughters, their sisters, um, as they waited basically for the return of their men, um, learned about the massacre, but not always about the fate of their relatives, and then endured official lies about Captain. This is really the central focus in the case of this uh, movie. Um, I have to warn you actually that um, sometimes you may be confused by a multitude of stories and details. You may be alienated by names that can be quickly recognized by Polish audiences but not necessarily by American viewers. Um, and yes, I think you are going to be horrified actually by the bloody finale. Everybody is really uh, anticipating. Uh, I still think that Vida actually gets his message uh, pretty much true and true. Uh, last thing I would like to say is uh, a very interesting thing actually about this movie that is episodes with officers precede and follow segments of the plot that actually take place after their death. Um, so for roughly half of the movie, we actually see the people who are already dead, and we know that. And uh, I think this sort of strategy actually was very well pinpointed um, in the second part of the Polish title of this film, which is Postmortem, After Death. Um, I think it would be inappropriate of me to wish you enjoy cutting or have fun. Uh, but I very much hope that you will spend a reflective time and uh, that this film will stay with you, perhaps uh, will make you watch Vida's other works or learn more about the Katyn Massacre. Thank you very much.